Look, I get it. You're tired of spirit ashes. They make the game too easy, and they weren't in Dark Souls 3. But did you know spirit ashes aren't the only quality of life improvement added in to Elden Ring? Back in the day, we didn't have a horse. We had to walk everywhere. We didn't have a physic flask to crank our damage by 20%. We didn't even have the ability to change our weapon arts. Elden Ring isn't Dark Souls 4, but what if it was? What if we stripped out every piece of this game that wasn't in Dark Souls 3? Including all that previously mentioned stuff and like, some weird stuff that will come up later. That would be like the Dark Souls of Elden Ring runs. To watch these runs live, follow us on Twitch, we find new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Join the Patreon if you want to support the channel, and watch exclusive videos, full episodes, just for the patrons. It's all pretty egalitarian, just pay whatever you can. And make sure you like and subscribe. If we ever play Dark Souls 3, and you want to be the first one to know, you got Gotta smash that subscribe button. Now let's get started playing Elden Ring without any of the stuff that makes Elden Ring special. Probably a bad idea, right? We'll start off Dark's Holes 4 by making a jump off a cliff, and that's a mistake because jump was mapped to the X button when I did that. That's not Dark Souls. In Dark Souls, if you wanna jump, you need to be running and hit the L3 button. Much more intuitive. Don't worry, we won't make that mistake again. Limgrave is so full of Elden Ring mechanics you're supposed to be introduced to. Kale sells the crafting kit. I'm sorry, this isn't Fortnite. This is a real game. For real gamers, we won't be crafting anything. Melina gives us a horse, but I'm feeling big and rich today. Let's save a horse by riding the ground with our feet. Feet. Immediately, we see a problem with no horseplay, the big troll that jumps down and a hundred little archers. It's almost as though this is here to teach you how to use your horse to get around mobs of enemies. Oh well, hit the gas and get hit by the gassy breath of the troll. Over and over again. Doesn't kill us though, so that's nice. We're heading over to the Saint's Bridge. Since we started off as a wretch, we're using the club and nothing else. Here's something to note. If there is a ring equivalent in Dark Souls 3 to a talisman in Elden Ring, we're going to be using it. So, so Flynn's ring is the same as the blue dancer charm, that means we can use it. If we could use this spirit spring, you can get to the high road cave from down below, you just have to run across a Giel lake and that sounds pretty annoying. Also, pretty soon we're going to be ditching the club, like a person hitting their 30s this year should. Something you can do in Dark Souls 3, fight bosses, for levels. The Tibia Mariner drops a pretty crappy amount of runes, but we're literally level 1, and just a little bit of strength will give us what we need to use the weapon of choice for this run. I'm gonna level with y'all. There isn't an Elden Ring specific reason we died to the Tibia Mariner. Just a few stray hits from the skeletons in the boat. You don't have to tell anyone about that. That can be our little secret. Yeah, this one is never really worth narrating. It's just kind of running around with a hammer and hitting the thing until it's dead. I'd love to invest in vigor, but that weapon we're chasing needs more muscle, so strength it is. Melina warps us to the Firelink Shrine. Dark Souls 3 has a hub. We can use a hub. Then it's time for us to get the main weapon for this run, the Guts Sword. People call the Great Sword a Guts Sword because Miyazaki is a huge fan of Olivia Rodrigo's sophomore album, Guts. We all agree, it's an Olivia Rodrigo reference. I love that because it's so true. Now, here's the problem. This is a stealth mission. But there weren't any stealth mechanics in Dark Souls 3, so we have to drop down and avoid some dinosaur dogs. You can quit playing Dark Souls 3 though, so I use the power of quitting, which you should try if you've noticed your wages have stagnated while your workload continues to increase. Anyway, we're able to open the chest, then quit out and go back and grab the sword to end up getting chomped anyway. It's all good. Rodrigo Greatsword acquired. And we can use that because Miyazaki has been a stand going all the way back to the first Dark Souls. Hell, even Demon's Holes if you count the Dragon Bone Smasher. How does that work when the album came out in 2023? Time travel. Also, the Ash of War on this is Stomp, which is in Dark Souls 3. It's just called Stamp. It's not a big enough difference for me to care. It's still too heavy to use, so we need to get a ring. The Elden Ring version of the Knight's Ring is hanging out in Fort Gale, and we have to get in there without a horse. Oga is spamming Super Gravity Arrow Rain. There's a ton of soldiers. There's the head chariots. There's firewalls on the ground. We have have to get around. We still haven't had a chance to invest in Vigor, but this is why I'm one of the hardest players in Elden Ring. I have one of the most best offense in Elden Ring history. Look at this shit. I put the team on my back and just run in Greg Jennings style. Did y'all watch YouTube like 12 years ago? 
Is that a reference we're gonna remember? Even when Oga turns on the wall hacks and shoots me on the ladder from the other side of the castle, I don't care. I am simply built different and I am him. Run up to the chest and get it open and die. Another Dark Souls 3 classic, die opening a chest and running back to get whatever's inside it. Interesting thing though, we can't use the stake of America because there are no stakes of America in Dark Souls 3. Instead, we just have to do it again, blast through on foot, activate the power of those legs, then grab the Knight's Ring or the Star Scourge heirloom and die again. Raw talent. Nobody in the business is dying like me. Check it out, we even die in the Stone Digger Cave because I forgot to change the jump button. Who else is dying this much in their Elden Ring videos? It's a stylistic choice. I don't really want to waste a bunch of money on smithing stones. We're going to be pretty tight on funds. I mean, think about it. We can't craft pickles. We can't craft anything. We can't even consume the pickles on the ground because there's no consumable in Dark Souls 3 that gives you additional runes. Can we at least hit up the dragon barrel to kill the sleepy dragon? Not really, or at least not this early. Here, I recorded some footage later, but it'll give you a little play-by-play -play on why we can't do the dragon barrel. If we warp to the dragon barrel, first thing we have to do is outrun the black blade kindred on foot unless he doesn't want to chase us. You're a pretty chill dude, huh? Okay, well, after that, we'd have to run across the bridge with Grail, who would be much harder to fight without a regular jump attack. It's not like we can just run right past him too. Oh, we can just run right past him. Thought he'd be better at catching you without the horse. Okay, well, Putrid Avatar would be a great way to get runes. But after that, the only two paths to Fort Faroth are this Spirit Spring, which we can't use, or circling around the bottom with the balls. See that Spirit Spring? That's the way down to the balls. It's not like, oh, we can just, we just fall down on some roots, huh? Okay, turns out we didn't even need to because there's a third path that brings you right to the front of the sleeping grail dragon. Oh no, we woke the mama. Now a bunch of tiny dragons all aggro to us and wanna kill us without the horse. We can't get to the grace without just running because they don't really chase us very good. This would have been super easy. This wasn't hard at all. And we could have gotten those sleepy dragon runes and the putrid avatar runes early. Huh. <laughs> Should have gone to that thing. But we didn't do that. So uh, back to the run we did do. We fight all the stone digger miners on the way down the tunnel. We're still at the point where even small amounts of runes can level us up. And we don't have the strength for the Rodrigo sword yet. By the time we hit the stone digger troll boss, we don't have any flasks. But who cares? Just break his ankles over and over. Can't use that roar medallion. There isn't a ring equivalent for it. But we can get our strength up to the point where we can use the gut sword. Yeah, that puts a smile on my face. Now let's get back to horsing around. On the path to Lernia, we have to fight the dogs since we can't just run past them. Not a problem, they all get one shot by our effin' chonker. Finally get a sacred tier at the little church. Going to the Weeping Peninsula is an option, but the amount of running is highly discouraging. Normally it's like a 10 minute field trip, but without the horse, it'd be like half an hour. That's gonna come back to bite us later, but it's not biting me now, so I don't care. I debated not utilizing the open world since Dark Souls 2 is really the only other Souls game I would call open world, but like, I don't, what else am I gonna do? Region lock? I don't wanna make a checklist of 20 things I need to make sure I'm not doing, in addition to the checklist of 20 things I'm already not doing. Instead, we'll just run through learning it for as many upgrade materials as we can grab. Grabbing them without the horse is more difficult since we can't just hop in and out of these gazebos. If I don't wanna run around the overworld poisoned, this is my life now, knocking over mushrooms. Not that it really matters because grabbing some more stones a second later, we get to play Megalovania with a flower. Well, that was a bad time. Then we get poisoned in the overworld anyway. Never try, gamers. If you never try, you can never be disappointed. After holding down circle and forward for about 10 minutes, we finally make it into Raya Lucaria Crystal Tunnel, where we have another bad time with the laser miners. How do you people play this game with less than 40 vigor? What is wrong with y'all? I almost fell off, but let's be honest, I'm never gonna fall off. These videos are just getting better. Crystallion with the Colossal Sword is pretty darn free, so let's just bask in that. Are you basking? Bask. I request that you bask. 
For whatever cruel reason, I decided to upgrade the sword instead of the health bar. The sword is fine, Phil. I mean, it's bad, but it works. Time for one of my favorite mother trucking levels in the game, the Ruin Strewn Oedipus. I thought we had to do this because the Dectus medallions would be too hard to grab, but hindsight's 2020. Let's start the climb. It goes pretty smooth. Maybe Miley paved the path for Olivia, you know? If you just take your time and fight people, you can get all the items you need until a goblin jumps on your back and kills you. Never mind, I can just run. Now why grab a rune arc here? Well, there are consumables you can eat in Dark Souls that will boost your health. The Morgoth Great Rune is actually a little worse than an Ember. We can't enjoy Godric's Great Rune, but eventually we will be able to get a little more health. Finally make it to the top, but I am not ready for the Magma Worm. Instead, we're gonna go fight Margit, who is probably harder than the Magma Worm. Just my opinion there. Obviously, Makar can hit a lot harder with individual hits, but Margit has combos. Colossal Swords are kind of slow. You can fight Margit with a slow weapon. You can fight Margit without Vigor. Doing both at the same time is not great. Also, little gripe, why can't I push him off the cliff? I just wanna get Margit off. Why can't I get him off? Crits are still big damage though. After he jumps back down, we're able to avoid the hammer a couple of times and get another big crit for the win. After a few deaths. At least we can invest in Vigor now. Or buy the Night Set, that's also a choice. Vigor Defense will also help us take more hits and might do more for us in the short term than the Vigor Investment. Or I'm coping, but you don't know. Let's head into the Abandoned Cave. To the, let's go to the Abandoned Cave? To the Abandoned Cave. Oh my god, is this so much worse without a horse? Finally made it in, and this place doesn't get worse without the benefits of Elden Ring because you can't ride a horse in here anyway. Clean route time. Little timing issue, so we're just gonna quit out to avoid that grab. Come back in, big hits right away. Send the Spear Knight skyward and get a crit. Then, same thing to the sickle. When this thing hits, it hits. And we get the Silver Covetous Serpent Ring, or in this game, the Golden Scarab. In Dark Souls 3, the Silver Serpent Ring gives you runes, and the Gold Silver Ring gives you item discovery. In this game, the Golden Scarab gives you runes, and the Silver Scarab gives you item discovery. They flipped him. I don't know why. Makar time with a pinch more vigor, and yeah, this dude is easy. Just don't get hit. Run away from the charge, back up a bit for the magma, and hit the head. All of his moves are slow enough that you can walk away and walk back in. After we get a crit on the head, we go to the toes and start chopping at the tail. Personally, I miss the Souls games, where you could hit a boss's tail, chop it off, and get a unique weapon. Oh well. Phase two, just stick to that mad tanked and you win. That's a lot of runes, so we'll finally have somewhat comfortable amounts of vigor. Remember in a previous video when I said it was really cool riding the elevator up to Altus after this fight? Well look, here it is. Look, it's Altus. You thought the world was open before, and then you go up an elevator and there's just a second open world stacked on your first open world? God, that's cool. Enough of that for now, let's hit up the Boletaria Palace, I mean Stormvale Castle. Sometimes people get upset that I reuse jokes like Fortite or Ruin Strewn Oedipus, but FromSoft has effectively been remaking Demon's Holes since 2009, and I'm trying to appeal to the same audience. The ballistas are even the same, and I suck at dodging them, just like I do in Demon's Holes. Godric time, and it turns out Big Ass Sword is pretty good. We wait for him to do a goofy move, then trade charged attacks. That's pretty much all we're doing until we get the crit window and push him into phase two. Immediately break him down, Colossal Sword just do that sometimes. Get another big crit, that's our first shard bearer down. It honestly didn't even take all that long, considering we've just been hoofing it this whole time. Or I guess, specifically not hoofing it. We need to go to the Prison of Hope next, which is a school in this game. Honestly, FromSoft is pretty based, replacing a palace with a more working class castle and a prison with a school. Only problem, after getting the grace outside, I remembered we need the key. Can't do the short hop down without a horse, so hit the legs again. All right, Smarag is right by the key. We could use a few extra runes anyway, but we can't do jump attacks like we normally do in Elden Ring. That could be an issue if we want to hit the head, but it turns out getting head is easy when you've got something this long and thick. We don't even have to try that hard. We just kind of smack it on either side of Smarag's mouth. It even lays down a couple of times so we can finish in its eye. Ouch, that's got a sting. School of Hope is another legacy dungeon, which is a fun way to say we copy pasted this from the last game, but didn't plan on you using a horse, so you can't use a horse. I shouldn't have died here, but this first grace, that's bait. 
It's just there to trick you into standing still so the marionettes you ignored come kill you. Sift time. At least this one doesn't have a sad boy phase where it just limps forward asking you to euthanize it. Seriously, the red wolves are so cool and I've wanted to run around with a pet sift since Dark Souls 1. Please give us a red wolf spirit ash in the DLC. You can even make it have no HP. Just give me that. Each hit we land does like 15% of its HP, so it's not all that hard. Let's head on up to beat Moongrim with one of the most powerful Dark Souls 3 tools, quitting. And hey, it's time for the Fool's Idol, Renala. Unlike Fool's Idol, you actually are supposed to hit the clones here. It's the one way to make her drop down to our level. It's also a two cycle. That's a bummer, but it makes sense. We're not as stupid over leveled as we normally are for this fight. Phase two is on Rom's Lake from Bloodborne and Stamp lets us knock Renala up. It's clear she wanted another kid. You see her holding that egg. After a big crit, she's living with a sliver, but the Bloodhound Knight comes out to block us. Come on, Renala. How many of your dogs do we have to kill? Chase her down. Get the win. That's the school of hope. Since that's two shard bearers down, let's go get another ring and another pocket. For the ring to Altus. We didn't come from the deck to Slift, so we have to run. All good. This is running we'll have to do later anyway. The golem archers will be aggro since we came up through the precipice, but it's a non-issue. They don't hit us once. Is the horse really not that important? Everything I thought would be hard without the horse has been fine. Gilka time. You can summon the horse for Gilka, but like, you don't have to. Just hit her a lot. Now we have Lloyd's Sword Ring, aka the Ritual Sword Talisman for 10% more damage when we're at full health. This would be a great time to go get flask upgrades so we don't have to spam the charges, but who has time for that? Let's warp through to Redmain Castle and meet everyone. Now, you can summon allies in Dark Souls 3. The most you can summon though is capped out at Three, because it's Dark Souls 3, of course. I love summoning everyone for the Radon fight. Getting a whole army together to fight one dude is sick, and it's absolutely the intended way for you to do this fight, because, like, why else would they be here? You're also supposed to be using the horse, which you know, because they let you use the horse. And because they gave Radon, like, 20 attacks that are just a pain in the ass to dodge without the horse. That's not to say it's impossible to dodge any of these without the horse, it's just something I haven't practiced. Basically, I'm fighting a new boss. And fighting this new boss, I learned a new technique. If you back up during that arrow phase, it starts his melee phase early. That is brand new information! Sometimes it, like... Doesn't work though, so we just gotta do the arrow phase on foot, which isn't that bad. Don't be a baby, just roll when he shoots the arrow. This is actually how I fought Radon the first time I played the game. It was before I knew about the perpendicular horse run strat. This is all pretty bad though. Mostly, it's just giant shockwaves and spinning stuff he does in phase two. I'm used to being able to dart out with torrent or having twice as many distractions. Oh, also you can't resummon your allies in Dark Souls 3. So after Radon kills them, they stay dead. I just leave them dead. I started taking phase one so low. Then try to summon for phase two, but sometimes that gets us hit with a meteor. And that plus one flask, it is making us chug a lug a lug anytime we take a hit. The extra time and frustration added to navigating the overworld by removing the horse is the worst part of removing the horse. It actually takes us so long to beat Radon, it spills over into the next stream. Honestly, we're just walled out here for a while. So long that I noticed some things about Radon's AI. Before he goes for the Craig Blade, he needs the land to be flat, but he also needs a target to be within his hitbox for that attack. What does that mean? Well, if you run around in a circle on some hills, he might just spin around for a full minute, like a dog before it lays down. Look at him go. I ruined it by summoning Alex. Oh well. It was still funny. If you think the winning run won't be janky, you don't know jank. We back up to start the melee phase early, even do a little do -si do for some extra time, and Radon says, nah, I'm just gonna keep blasting. I started blasting. Bah! All good. Remember, I'm good at dodging the arrows even on foot. Let's also bring Alex, Okina, and Lion- <sighs> Lionel? Shit. I was trying to get the dog, not the lion. It'll be fine. We're faster than our other buddies. They have summoning sickness. Where's the anger incarnation when you need one, am I right? It's easy enough to get a few hits off in the paint before they show up. Radon jumps up into the air. He lands. I wasn't scared. Run back in and smash those cares away. For once, I remember there's a win box when he summons the meteors, and then he just keeps doing easy easy stuff until we win. That'll open up some very important parts of the world, and I think we can still get there without a horse. Let's keep walking. What happens next? They walk, 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 walk. 
walk, walk. Somebody's following them. Yeah, we're gonna need some endurance for this. It's actually for the night set, but it also lets us sprint through enemies a little bit longer. That's a nice plus. Because our feet are lacking hooves, we gotta kill more dogs. Y'all see what a lack of proper transportation infrastructure does to someone? Going to carry a manor, Loretta is spamming those arrows at us. Could be a problem, but it's just a chore. Loretta is also not a problem. How many hits does it take? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Could have been even less if I was using stamp earlier. The Ronnie quest is already irksome to me, but now it's irksome for longer because we have to walk. So cool! We have to walk underground, but first we need to find a way down to the Mistwood without using the Spirit Springs. I know I could come in from the other side, but what if we just fell down and it was fine? The horse really is just convenience, huh? Okay, this is the closest we'll get to Fort Heist. Stopping at the Grace before going down the hole. I'm sad about it too, gamers. Gravity could be a problem without the horse, Eh, it's not. Still not. Still hasn't been. Whoops. Mimic tier time. We can take our clothes off because you can get naked in Dark Souls 3. Makes the fight a joke, but that's fine. We need a few freebies. This one's taking a while. Especially because after lighting a bunch of torches, we have to fight the regal ancestor spirit without torrent. Doing this fight without torrent is a damn nightmare of irritation. Not only does it have the ability to jump around out of your attacks, it can teleport to the other side of the arena and heal itself. Seriously, doing this without a horse makes this boss fight terrible. Of course, you always have to do it without a horse. That's just why it's a terrible boss fight. All the irritation makes me get greedy and push in when I should have backed off while I was healing, so I died and we lost six minutes. Even worse, you have to fight this boss again. I don't even want to be around anymore. The Colossal Sword does its job a little bit better next time, getting a stance break to, one, give us some big damage, but more importantly, it stops the moose from moving. Call me Boris bad enough, because I fucking hate this moose. It's a rocky and Bullwinkle reference. Your grandparents would love it. At least we get to keep doing the Ronnie quest now? Yay? Get the knife, trade it for the statue, and run through the Incel River. Literally a single hit from the Rodrigo sword breaks the Astel Jr. stance so we can hit it over and over again for free. Lake of Rot time. Hey, wait, Rot isn't in Dark Souls 3. Thankfully, Rot is like climate change. It can't hurt you if you simply don't believe in it. We just have to heal a bunch because there's invisible basilisks in here. Damn Miyazaki and his invisible basilisks. Why is everyone so upset about the fake news Rot Swamp and ignoring the very real invisible basilisks? Basilisks. I demand the news tell both sides of this story. Astel time. This is another boss that's pretty horrible without the horse. It teleports. It has giant AoEs that force you to run so far away you don't get to punish them. Also like the Regal Ancestor, you always have to do this without the horse. I just think this boss sucks. There isn't even like a lore reason for why you can't bring your horse here. Isn't it being summoned with the same magic that brings spirit ashes? What are the rules? Well, the first rule is don't get grabbed and I broke that rule. So I died. That's why it's the first rule. Third try, I don't know what was different. We just, we just hit him more and uh, we don't get hit as much. I found that I really like cleaning up the remembrances outside the royal capital before going in, so let's head to Volcano Manor. However, I'm not gonna walk all the way to the top of a volcano. That's halfling shit, and I'm too proud to do it. Instead, I'll just kill Boggart, give a necklace to Raya, and blue skadoo to Volcano Manor. Zoom, zoom, zoom through the town, and we don't need any of these Cyberstones, so let's just fight Smog. Solo, Smog. Smog low. Smog low. That's it. Charge in, he slams his hand twice. Avoid the big stab, he slams his hand two more times. He and he slams his hands again then again then two belly bumps then two more hand slams and another two smolo what are you doing phase two he gets new moves like the big jump and the fist slam Dude, big crit. Back off for the Black Flame Ritual and he slams us on the ground. Honestly, it's a good thing he has the rollout. Otherwise, everyone would point out how bullshit his repeating thrust is. We're out of juice, but thankfully he goes for the Black Flame Ball. I thought Smo did lightning. Why is FromSoft messing with the classics? We've got a few extra somber stones, so after picking up the Storm Ruler for the Rikard fight, we upgraded it a little bit. I'm not even sure if that matters. I realize the Storm Ruler is called the Serpent Hunter in this game, but frankly, I don't care. It's a Storm Ruler, and instead of narrating this fight, because there is no interesting narration to do for it. Let's rank the three iterations of Storm Ruler Fight. Number three, this one. It sucks. It's the second most restrictive of the Storm Ruler fights. The spectacle is cool, I guess, but compared to the other two fights, this is the least visually interesting. It also has two phases, which is annoying. The arena isn't creative. It's just a big open floor that doesn't give you cover for any of the attacks. And Rikard's second phase has an attack that just fully makes you stop playing the game. Number two, 
Storm King. It gets bonus points for being the OG, but it's also the best spectacle. That giant space manta ray? Rad. The arena is also laid out really cool. There's a house you can use to hide from the enemies, and having a swarm gives you the satisfaction of blasting a bunch of stuff out of the air. Normally I don't like a swarm, but yeah, that's kind of fun. The run back is also fine, since you have the old hero's bonfire right before. Only downside is the weak rewards. Yorm's number one. It finishes the Sigurd story arc. The storm ruler is actually optional. His design is sick. And also, Sigurd is there. None of the other fights have Sigurd epic fail. All right, Rykard is dead. Moving on. Time to make mistakes. Redmain Castle is back in battle mode, which means we can grab the beautiful wet blade because it's red hot. Bernie will sell a stomp, or I guess his sword does? Having the Ash of War lets us switch our infusion, something you can do in Dark Souls 3, without changing our weapon art, something you can't do in Dark Souls 3. But here's the mistake. I thought the Valiant Gargoyles had less elemental resistances. Switching to the Fire Infusion splits the damage of the weapon and applies their resistances twice, which would already be bad, but it's made worse considering their fire resistance is higher than their standard defense. Also, if they're on water, which this arena is covered in, it's even higher. I was thinking of Falling Star Beasts, which have lower elemental resistances. Didn't figure that out until writing the script, so, uh... I've made some real big mistakes. Something I'd like to know is, how we're whiffing the gargoyles this much with a colossal sword. It's the biggest sword in the game, but it's whiffing like we're rocking the goddamn Cestus. Major oofs left and right here. Honestly, I think the big issue is just missing those flask upgrades. We have less healing, but also make ourselves vulnerable longer by chugging and chugging and chugging. The fire mistake was a huge misplay, for sure, but the real feeling I'm getting is a lack of healing. Also, this is the first fight that I really miss the spirit ashes. There's a lot of ganks in this game, and the spirit ashes make them a lot more manageable. I gotta admit that, even if the point of this video is to showcase how much more important the horse and the physic are, yeah, the spirit ashes help. It takes a bunch of attempts, a bunch of heartbreaking whiffs, we finally break through to make our way into deep root. Can we do this without a horse? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. We can run through the ant bath, nothing bad happens. Free rune arcs and free runes. Missing the horse is the worst part of the run, but also the least impactful at the same time. Fia's champs, the first one gets absolutely deleted by the Rodrigo sword. Roger does a little bit better, but not much. I know the champs other than Roger and Lionel don't have names because they're supposed to be actual player builds, but I always play offline, and these dudes need names. Name them in the comments below. For now, we crush the afflicted grave robber in one hit. Sarah and Varg take a few more hits, but they're no trouble. Sorry I had to reference Dark Souls 2, I know some people get hurt by that, but uh, if you're honest with yourself, Elden Ring is a lot more like Dark Souls 2 than it is Dark Souls 3. Search your feelings, you know it to be true. We'll talk about that more if this video does well and I decide to make a sequel where we only use equipment from Dark Souls 2. Ooh, or Bloodborne. I could finally use the pizza cutter. Speaking of Bloodborne, let's go to Anti Yarnum and fight an Asylum Demon Tree. Asylum Treeman. There we go. Blast through, fight a few Giga Chads, and get Lloyd's Shield Ring, aka the Ritual Shield Talisman. Let's go fight the Ghost of Godfrey's Past. I jump right into the axe. Whoops. Thankfully, I have figured out how to use jump on L3 for these rocks. It feels weird, but we got it. And then when I do the next run, which is on the Patreon, by the way, uh, I kind of got used to the L3 jumping, so I whiff jumps in that run too. Go watch it on the Patreon, if it's up, which it will be soon. Easy stance break, chug jug to get our ritual boosts. Both of us whiff as he stands up. Respect to a fellow connoisseur of the whiffs. Then we hit, he whiffs, a much better trade, and that's the end of the ghost boy. Morgoth next, and the big sword hits him. He gets so close to killing us before calling down the sword rain, but we live in. No stance break in phase one. Hopefully that means we get one in phase two. We do, and the chug jug to get our Lloyd boost before the crit, that's a smooth win. Before we do the four Biden lands, can I just say, I love playing Dark Souls 4, using the great sword, walking everywhere. And twin! Yeah, we have to fight the four kings now, but budget cuts reduced it down to two kings. The economy is in shambles. With them out of the way, we can ride up to the Divine Tower of Altus and activate Morgoth's Great Rune, which means we can now use Embers, a consumable that will raise our total HP. Started doing the four Biden lands at night? That's not a good idea. There's a knight's cavalry here. Let's just wait it out and then start walking. Wow, it would be really, really nice if we could have walkable cities connected with public transit. Could you imagine if you could get on a train in Limgrave and go to the mountaintops of the giants in an hour? Sure, it would be an investment. Think of the economic boom for everyone when you could live in one area and work and play in every other area. Beyond the spiritual boost of being connected, there's some goddamn money sitting on the table. Unlike in the Dragon Barrel, this Blacklight Kindred is super aggressive. But remember, winners 
quit. Winners quit all the time. Knowing when you've lost and saving your energy for the things you're best at is a winning strategy. Now we're in the mountaintops of the Giants. It's Canada and we're on foot. Yikes. There's a bell bearing we can use to level up the Rodrigo sword more, then grab the Catacomb Grace just because we have a big long bridge. And there's a stone golem archer. Oh no, how do we avoid that without a horse? All we can do is run forward and hope he misses. That motherfucker miss, man. In the heat of battle, he miss. Sorry, horse. I guess you're still useless. Okay, 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 okay. Borealis, it's a flying dragon. Surely we can't outrun the dragon on foot and just ignore Realis? Yeah, it's fine. It's a little inconvenient. We can't jump up the spirit spring, so we have to fight the dino dogs, but I overestimated them. Just hit them a couple times. It's fine. Can we get the ancient dragon stone without the horse? Yes. Are you not seeing the pattern here now it's yorm time and the storm ruler doesn't work here the horse doesn't work here when i started the challenge this is one of the boss fights i feared most even more than melania since i can just hit her like normal this fight intended for you to have the horse so doing it without is just gonna be so rough right not this time roll through the avalanche and just keep pressing forward he does the overhead slam giving us enough time to break his anklet then break the ankle underneath that anklet after that he rolls away and applies the fire buff but his ball doesn't hit nor do the pillars afterwards the tree stump almost got us hit but it was fine we get a stance break right before phase two now he's got a stump this is where everything gets worse hit the hand first then go for the thighs hey pretty quick stance break but we crit the eye instead of comboing it like i wanted to i can't avoid both balls but we still have plenty of flasks that's what lloyd's shield ring is for right gamers yeah this dude is also playing dark souls 3 because he is rolling all over the place i greed into the columns and never get punished free damn Damage. Also, we don't have Sigurd, aka Alexander, because we'd have to talk to him on Gelnir, and I forgot to do that. Still doing just fine here. Eight flasks left, and we keep running after him. The Tarnished is going to be marathon ready after this much cardio. We finish things off on his mad taint. And yeah, it was fine. First try one. Time to hit up the Ringed City. You want some Elden Ring DLC? What do you mean? The Dark Souls 3 DLC is right here. For some reason, the Godskin Duo ends up being a problem. I mean, the first time it's a double hit from the rollout. That's just some baloney. We haven't had that happen in a while. I guess we don't have a Spirit Ash. That could help. Usually we make it a 3v2, which helps make sure that it's a 2v1 later. So yeah, one of the deaths comes after Bernie dies. So we're getting ganked by two at the same time. When we win, it's a pretty standard fight. No jank here. Bernie takes a second to get some aggro and then gets both of them aggro at the same time cool gotta go in and fight smoke here big stance break but i whiff the dodge on the jump that's like the easiest move to dodge come on man roll out and then another roll out but this one in the corner and i can't move how is this the one where we win a third roll out that one decides to hit on top of the column this is bad thank god bernie handled ornstein well enough another skinny comes in and with our rodrigo sword and bernie's Thick scepter. It's broken down super fast. Same with the next chunky. We finish things off with a massive crit. That'll give us the last bell bearing we need to max out the Rodrigo sword for next time. Next time, it's maximum guts. Before the swag jump, do you ever stop and think about how these beast men can wombo combo you if you're not paying enough attention? Because damn, ow. There's the swag jump, bird run goes fine, and we have to fight the Dark Soulzik 3 Sentinel. He's a tricky dancer, but the fight isn't all that deep. If you're a regular watcher of the channel, you know how we handle this. That champion is done, dear. Malakath next, and dude has some hands, but more notably, we don't. We are whiffing so much with the Colossal Sword. How is it so stumpy? I honestly think great swords and great hammers have better reach than their colossal counterparts just because of how they're swung. Great weapons swing out. Colossal weapons swing down. It's the only thing I can think of to explain why these are whiffing so dang often. Eventually we get in a win. Run in with a dash attack then keep poke poke poking until we get a crit. It's just enough to not send him into phase two, which is good because then we can start phase two with the pressure of a fully charged R2. Then get another one after the silly jump, one more hit and it's a stance break, then a crit. It's really easy to fight if your sword connects. Good thing I never miss. There's a health boosting ring in Dark Souls 3, so let's drop down for a health boosting talisman in Elden Ring. Do, 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 do it healthy.
If only Gideon got the memo that health bars are important. We flip that old flapjack while he's monologuing, then just continue to bash the shit out of him. Just never give him a second to breathe. Very cool. Godfrey gives us a little guff. I'm trying too hard to trade in when I should be playing more cautiously. Frankly, we were sitting at low health for way too long. Just hit the Estus button. There were Estus flasks in Dark Souls. Dude, you can still use them. Attempt to head in and slam. But when our health gets too low, we'll heal this time. Stance break, crit, and he's doing the big stomps. I got a little too greedy, but that actually keeps the pressure up for phase two for a big crit. Shockwaves are out. We only need one more hit. Pretty free. Swapping the fire infusion for Radagon. He's got 0% fire resistance, so this should be hitting pretty hard. I goofed the cone attack. Should remember how that works by now. Learned my lesson and paid off with a stance break. I get that this section of the game might not look all that different than Dark Souls 3, but Physic Flasks are cool. All these charged attacks are doing way less damage than they could, and since we have the Fire Infusion on, we could also have the Fire Boosting Physic tier for 20% more damage, stacking with 20% more damage from the Charged Attack tier. That's a lot of damage that we're not having. Anyway, we just kind of hit him until we're an Elden Beast with two flasks left, because those flasks are only plus five, and when we got hit against Radagon, we needed to drink a lot more of them. If we hit the open world for more upgrades, that wouldn't have been an issue. Early stance break on the Elden Beast, and that damage is huge. It has slightly better fire resistance than Radagon because of all the water on the ground, but only 10%. I didn't forget the jump button for the charged rings, that's pretty good. And it goes right for melee attacks, even better, easy punish. Then more melee attacks for another easy punish and another stance break. Was it interrupting Elden Stars? Ah, not this time. Good thing we still haven't taken a hit yet, so we can use our two flasks to heal off that con constant chipping. Also a good thing, I noticed we were close to the invisible wall for the rings and ran the other way, so we didn't die. Just to keep it interesting, let's get grabbed. It's not an insta-kill, but it will make the rest of the fight very tight. These melee attacks are so easy to dodge. I could probably do it in my sleep. Big win against God, only have cleanup left. But that cleanup means running through the mountaintops of the giants on foot, including the section with the million sands skeletons and the death right bird. How could I possibly solve that? problem. Run, Barry, run. Uh, yeah, we just run again and it it's fine cool castle soul is also fine you can never have a horse in here and denial is a 3v1 without a spirit ash obviously spirit ashes have been carrying us it's not like you can two shot each of the soldiers and kind of kite them away from nile oh wait yeah yeah you can absolutely do that they gave the nameless king frostbite but i know how to dodge this call me ornstein because i am getting all up in the nameless king's guts if you think they were just really good friends i've got some great news for you about Achilles and Patrocles. That's not quite enough to get us to the Consecrated Snowfield. We have to kill an old man too. Consecrated Snowfield next, on foot, in the fog. And we can't mark the map because maps weren't in Dark Souls 3. There's also a bunch of dragon skin soldiers with wombo combos. You see how this is all gonna go? Yeah, it's fine again. Penguin Noble holds the key to Mogwin and we hold the key to beating him. Hitting him really goddamn hard with the Rodrigo sword. Mogwin Palace on foot. There's a red swamp, but it doesn't actually make you bleed. I knew it didn't, but the first time I played the game, I thought it would. So we get to Mog, and here's where a lot of our issues are going to compile. No Spirit Ash means he's not going to be distracted. That's not ideal. But worse, no Physic means we just lose three flasks when he hits phase two. Skipping that trip to the Weeping Peninsula means we also don't go back to full when we chug the flasks. Ugh. But after two fails, we make it click. Run in and slam. Then avoid the big dash attack and hit him while he starts counting for a nasty crit. Three fully charged bangers push him into phase two, but god, that transition is brutal. A little crit here, and he's looking low, but getting in through all this splatoon juice is a pain. It's a matter of waiting for the bad attacks and getting him with a few more hits. Not all that hard, but not very good either. Placidious Axe really puts the mid in Medir. Medir has way too much health. I don't particularly love that boss fight either, but ugh, missing the extra damage from the Physic and not having a status effect just makes this fight so such a slog. I do my best to bait him into the wall, but for some reason, we still got hit by the Omega laser. What happened here? Let's do it again. Avoid all the big lightning explosions and make your way to the sweet dragon ass. Hit it from the back like donkey, then chase that tail back again. Stance break, we get a fully charged attack on the head and no crit, I guess. Okay. Some more questionable hitboxes, and then we run back to the tail and keep chopping. 
Hey, another stance break. This time we actually get the crit. That's nice. The damage is still bad. Finally get good positioning during the Omega Laser and hack him up for the win. Time to hug Fia and oh god. We never got the curse mark of death. Guess it's time to keep running, running, and running, running, and running, running, and running, running. Study Hall, quit out for the invader so he goes away, then just run past the Godskin Noble. It's only faster than us if it uses the rollout, and it can't roll out until phase two. Curse mark acquired. Hug me, then let's go fight the king of the storm. He's juicy up with some death blight but the nameless king isn't here so that's nice no play by play we hit the toes sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't it works more than it doesn't so eventually we win no issues in ordina no issues in the hallig tree land that swag jump and fight loretta weirdly i say she's most similar to dancer from dark souls 3 but on a horse with lasers there's a zone of safety for most of her attacks if you're right up next to her that's sort of the only dancer similarity and the fact that i just kind of like this fight i really like dancer too is there a specific reason? No, they're just pretty hype. If anything, I wish Loretta had more health and the back kick from the horse was an insta-kill. I really want that. I think it would be funny. Only one boss left. LFL is uneventful other than using the swag dagger to cross the rot swamp. You can do that at Dark Souls 3. Or at least you could if you don't want those ent monsters to freaking destroy you. And we get the physical defense talisman. There's a ring for that, so we can use the talisman for that. Break out the fire infusion for Melania. She's got zero fire resistance as long as she's not standing on the water. The great sword is incredibly similar to the Zwei Hander we used in the Siegward of Katarina run, which I'm also a Dark Souls 3 thing. They're both ultra great swords. They both have stamp upward cut as the ash. The only difference is we can't use physics like we did for that run, and we can use the fire infusion like we didn't in that run. No spirit ash here hurts, though maybe less so than other bosses. Spirit ashes can end up being juice boxes who heal Melania more than they hurt her, depending on what type of ash you're using. We can't use any. And she's moving at Sekiro speed with healing from Bloodborne in Elden Ring and we're only using things from Dark Souls. It's really a tour of all of FromSoft's hits. Our super slow weapon struggles here, especially because of her super armor. The weapon art can send her skyward, but only if she doesn't just constantly decide she is immune to poise breaking. When we actually can land a stomp, it rules. Huge combo. It's just very rare that we do, so we end up taking a couple of L's. Not that many, only five. We've definitely struggled more here, but definitely struggled. Here's the winning run. Jump in there and start swinging. Avoid her dash stab, trade a little before another dash stab and uh, another one. Stance break for that. You gotta stop spamming, Mel. While she stands up, we stamp, then a fully charged shot and another one for the stance break continue that chain until uh-oh ducky dance we live and double chug it but double chugging it doesn't even get us to full health Yeesh. good stance pressure going into phase two well not good better than nothing get the lloyd boost back and time the onion perfectly for a stamp and then another charge attack stance break on the water not ideal it reduces the fire damage she's taking but eh, better than nothing chain her into another stamp and then run away because we don't have the stamina to avoid the clones up close onion number two if we time this right we're good we take a little tick Damn. Then the wake up kick after the stamp, also not good. Greeting in gets us stabbed. This is a bad cycle of events, but she does the whirlwind and another onion. That's it. We can just greet in, get routed. We have enough damage to kill her now. At eight hours and 40 minutes, we killed 33 bosses and died 57 times. So which part of the Elden Ring puzzle caused the most deaths? I think it was the horse. Radon killed us more than any other boss because so many of his attacks are specifically meant to be dodged on horseback. I know you can dodge them without the horse, but it's pretty clear they intended you to be up on torrent. Beyond the benefits against Radon, the horse also saves you time getting upgrades. So we just never went to go get the upgrades because I couldn't be bothered to take that time. Finish the game at plus six flasks against Melania is not what you're supposed to have there. Spirit Ashes are probably the second biggest issue. I'll be honest about that. Having a distraction for these bosses is super important because they are all much more aggressive than the bosses in Dark Souls. They are. Go back and play Dark Souls 3 if you don't believe me. With the extra aggression and all the extra ganks, having an ally is a core part of this game's philosophy. The Physic Flask is kind of just gravy. It's really nice and more damage can definitely help you kill bosses faster, which I think is probably one of the best ways to reduce deaths, but compared to missing the horse and the spirit ashes,
matches, eh, it's kind of negligible. There's also plenty of talismans we were missing, like the Shard of Alexander, and even something as simple as getting Stone Sword keys. Like, we couldn't use Stone Sword keys. They're not in Dark Souls 3. That's a Dark Souls 2 thing for the White Branch of Vor or whatever. And that stops us from getting the Turtle Talisman and other fun things. There's a bunch of stuff in Elden Ring that makes Elden Ring special. Taking that away, we'll put this run in D tier, behind Garmin. So I guess it's more fun to play Bloodborne in Elden Ring than it is to play Dark Souls 4. Join the Patreon if you want to support the channel. All the tiers get you equal rewards. We equalized it this year, or at least uh, until I figure out how to do Elden Ring rewards instead of just D&D &D rewards. Follow us on Twitch if you want to watch these runs live, and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next episode.